All right, brothers and sisters, today is another bright new day that the Lord has made. And uh, we're going to rejoice and be glad in it as we study His Word. And uh, in today's Bible lesson, we're going to answer this one very baffling question that people always ask. Do angels have souls? Do angels have souls? What's your take about this? All right. So I don't know if you're ready. So if you're ready, let's get started. All right. Now, understanding angels is a very difficult task. And uh, we may never have all the answers, but the their appearances throughout scripture may give us some few insights into who they are and what they do. And uh, whether angels have souls or not is not addressed in the Bible. But uh, we can hypothesize. Because God created angels just as he created everything else. Remember in Colossians 1.16, the Bible says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. So this one gives us a clear picture that there is nothing which created itself. It Everything was created by God, even the angels. And uh, we understand also that God commands them and they obey. Look at Psalms 91 verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all ways. And also Psalms 103, 20 to 21, it says, Bless the Lord, ye all his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commands, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Mm -hmm. So you see, God commands the angels and they obey him. And another thing also, they fight for God and they protect God's people. That's also another thing that uh, they're supposed to be doing. Look at uh, 2 Kings uh, 6, 16 to 17. The Bible says, And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. This is the time when uh, people were coming to attack Elisha. And uh, his servant was really scared. And Elisha prayed that God can open the eyes of his servant so that he can see how many angels have been sent to protect them. You see, so the angels are being sent to fight for, God, uh, for God's people. And of course, you can go and read uh, in Psalms 91, 11 to 12, Daniel 6, 22, Matthew 26, 53. They all speak about uh, the angels fighting for God's people. Likewise, we see that uh, the angels also act as messengers, bringing the word of God to people through dreams, visions, or simply by appearing before them. And we can confirm this is in Matthew 1 verse 20. The Bible says, While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is in, is in her is conceived of the Holy Ghost. This is when Joseph was scared of taking Mary. He thought uh, Mary was uh, not faithful. But an angel was sent to come and tell her, him, don't worry, Joseph. And of course, we can see the same again and again. Angels being sent as messengers in Matthew 2.13, Luke 1, verse 11 to 20, Acts 1, 10 to 11, and uh, Acts 8.26. All those verses, they speak about the same thing. We also know that uh, angels are spiritual beings. As scripture describes them as ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. That is Hebrews 1 verse 14. They are ministering spirits sent to serve those 
who will inherit salvation are you among those so this is for you and uh the same angels they also called the uh, people or they are also called creatures who worship god these holy angels they they worship god think about uh, job 38 verse 7 the bible says when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. You see, the sons of God, they shouted for joy when, when the foundations of the earth were, were set by God. They shouted for joy. So they worshipped God. Are you seeing the point here? And also you can read uh, in Psalms 148 verse 2 and also Luke 2, 13 to 14 and also Revelation 5, 11 to 12. It also speaks about the same thing. All right? And... Uh, one thing we have to understand for sure about the angels is that uh, they do not worship. They do not uh, get worship for themselves. They are, they are not worshipped, all right? Because this, this is well confirmed. Uh, in the time of John the Revelator, do you remember John the Revelator? What really happened? Uh, the Bible says in Revelation 19 verse 10, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See, thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren I have testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. You see, John the Revelator wanted to worship this angel who was bringing these uh, glad tidings and those, the good news. But the angel said, No, I'm only a fellow servant. Please don't worship me. Don't worship me. And uh, while all these characteristics are remarkable, they do not answer questions about angels if they have souls. And the Bible is clear as unto the exact nature of the soul, other than it uh, being part of the uh, spiritual nature of mankind. However, we can submit that the soul is the central part of uh, our personhood. And people themselves are referred to as souls. Souls. Remember in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 41, the Bible says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. So you see, a soul is a central part of a personhood, okay? And a human soul is immaterial and immortal, and it proceeds after the body dies. It continues over and over after the body dies. Look at uh, the book of Daniel 12 verse 2. It says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Are you getting the point here? Also, you can read 2 Corinthians 5, 8, 9. It says, For we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him seeing the point here so generally we can understand that angels are personal spiritual beings they are personal spiritual beings and they are immortal okay the book of luke 20 36 tells us they are immortal neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of god being the children of resurrection you see luke 20 36 it tells us the nature of the angels that they are immortal now let's come to the heart of the matter we see that scripture never refers to angels as souls it seems that uh, the immaterial nature of angels is not the same thing as the immaterial human soul humans being any human being is a uh, unique among creations because they are made in the image of god genesis 127 we are all made in the image of god Okay, man, basically, <laughs> yeah, not, you know, we, are, we, are, we fell, we were created in the image of God, but now we have the image of Adam, a fallen man. Anyway, angels are separate order of being, different from humans, and people will not turn into angels at, de at, at, at death, and angels will never become humans. This clear distinction of the centrality of a soul in human would seem to indicate that angels do not have souls. But uh, there are other biblical hints that uh, angels are without souls. Human souls need atonement. Do you, do you understand? 
Leviticus 17:11, which uh, tells us about that the life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given you it upon you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. Do, do you remember that? Because it's the blood that atones for the soul. So if angels are without souls, then they don't need any atonement. Okay? And also understand that God protects and purifies souls. God himself, he protects and purifies souls. Titus 3.5 not by works of righteousness which you have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy ghost you see and also hebrews 10 21 to 20, uh, 22 he says and having a high priest over the house of god let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water see the point all right so, a soul can either be lost or saved. A soul can either be lost or saved. Are you getting the point? And uh, one thing that you have to understand about this is that the Bible clearly shows us that there is no way a soul can die. It can either get lost or can be saved but a soul is immortal all right ezekiel 18 verse 4 it says behold all souls are mine and the soul of the father so also the soul of the son is mine the soul that sinneth it shall die mm -hmm. you see none of these qualities of the soul applies to angels angels do not need to be purified atoned for or saved in Hebrews 1 and 2, we get a description how Jesus is superior to angels and teaches that his salvation is for humans, not angels. The son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Look at Hebrews 2.16. It tells us that. And also, you understand that angels worship Jesus. They worship Jesus. Hebrews 1.6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten in the world, he said, and let all the angels of God worship him. All right? We see all these explanations. All right? Angels worshiping God, serving the believers, like we see in Hebrews 1.14. But they are never they themselves do not need salvation and this may, may be a further indication that angels do not have souls and a major point of clarification is in order it is true that there are fallen angels who do not serve god and are in fact his enemies we might think that these fallen angels need salvation however there is no indication in the bible that they will ever seek to repent or that God has provided a way for salvation for them, they'll be judged. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels of sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Look at that. For if God spared not the angels, so, because they will not be spared. And even Satan himself will be cast into the lake of fire for all eternity. Revelation 20, verse 7. It says, when a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go to deceive uh, and, and all that story. And at the end of, after all that deception and everything, he'll be cast down into the lake of fire. So we know that humans, on the other hand, do have the opportunity to avoid judgment through the blood of Jesus. That blood gives us salvation. Ephesians 2, 1. The Bible says, and you he has quickened who are dead in your trespasses and sins. Wherein in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The Bible tells us that we have an opportunity to believe the gospel 
1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's what can save us, my friends. And all who turn to God and put their faith in Christ will be saved. We praise God in his grace. He's made a way for us to be saved and to dwell with him forever. We will dwell with him forever. Let me read you one verse about that. Revelation 21 verse 1. The Bible says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband, and so forth. You understand that we'll have a new heaven, a new place that we're going to stay, a new earth. You know, there'll be a new heaven, a new earth. The earth is made for humans. The heaven is made for angels. We, we just corrupted this earth. It was a very beautiful place for us all to stay, but we destroyed it. But God is so merciful, it's going to give us a new heaven and a new earth. I don't know if that has been a blessing to you. If you have been able to understand something and come to the knowledge of the truth. And brothers and sisters, that's the end of today's Bible lesson. Hope to see you in the next one.